we're talking about one of the great symbols of Paris and all of Western civilization. It is still standing this morning after a fire that nearly destroyed it. In April 2019, the world watched in horror as Notre Dame, one of the world's most iconic places of worship, caught fire. This was not your typical fire. It almost completely destroyed the building, as well as the countless pieces of history contained within. Then, recently, while experts and archaeologists were working to restore the Gothic beams and arches of Notre Dame, a disturbing discovery was made among the piles of ash and debris. What was this discovery, and what does it mean for the field of archaeology? Stick around till the end to know all about archaeologists' recent discovery underneath the Notre Dame. Notre Dame Cathedral, also known as Notre Dame de Paris, is a historic Catholic cathedral located in the 4th arrondissement of Paris, France, on the eastern half of the Ile de la Cité, island in the Seine River. It is one of the city's most famous and iconic structures, and it is widely regarded as one of the world's finest examples of French Gothic architecture and is dedicated to the Virgin Mary. The cathedral was constructed in the 12th and 13th century and has withstood numerous wars, revolutions and other historical events. Pope Alexander III laid the foundation stone for Notre Dame Cathedral in 1163 AD. Notre Dame de Paris has had two fleches or timber spires, the first of which was built between 1220 and 1230. It was eventually so damaged that it had to be removed in the late 18th century. Eugène Violet de Luc, a French architect, built the second in 1859. This 19th century spire stood 315 feet tall, 59 feet higher than the original 12th century spire. It is also famous for its magnificent stained glass windows and intricate stone carvings. Many important religious and historical artifacts are also housed at Notre Dame, including the crown of thorns, which is said to have been worn by Jesus Christ during his crucifixion. The Cathedral of Notre Dame, a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1991, served as Napoleon I's coronation site in 1804 and later as a funeral site for various French presidents. Every year, millions of people from all over the world visit the cathedral, making it a popular tourist attraction. On April 15, 2019, everything appeared to be in order at Notre Dame de Paris. That was until the early evening set in. When an alarm went off, the staff realized there was a fire somewhere in the historic cathedral. After evacuating everyone inside, they rushed to put out the fire before it spread, only to discover that it wasn't where they expected it to be. The fire had already begun to spread out of control by the time they pinpointed its location. This was a situation that those in charge of the cathedral, as well as experts and history buffs, had long feared. With parts of the structure dating back to the 12th century, the stonework in many areas was already extremely brittle. Many of the attic, spire and oak beams from centuries ago had dried out on the roof, making the entire cathedral vulnerable to a devastating fire. By April 2019, the possibility of a fire breaking out was a major concern, with fire wardens checking on the building several times per day. Unfortunately, all these precautions didn't stop the fire from breaking out. The cause is thought to have been an electrical problem, Parisians and the rest of the world watched as flames burned through the roof of this historic landmark for more than three hours. By the time the sun rose the next morning, it showed the severe damage that the fire had done to Notre Dame. Approximately two-thirds of the cathedral's roof had been destroyed during the fire, and the 19th century spire had completely collapsed. As if that wasn't bad enough, as the spire fell, it pierced the vault ceiling, exposing the building's interior to fire. It was a complete disaster. However, in March of last year, archaeologists discovered an astonishing wealth of statues, sculptures and remnants of an old rood screen dating back to the 13th century exactly beneath the spire floor where the transept joins the nave. Two well-preserved lead coffins caught their attention among these shattered artefacts. The discovery of the sarcophagus at the transept crossing indicated that the two individuals were influential enough in their respective eras to be buried in such renowned tombs at the heart of the cathedral. The discovery has been regarded as extraordinary and emotional by French experts. Cathedral burials, on the other hand, are a long-standing practice and lead coffins are largely reserved for the elite, 
Although both sarcophagi were relatively well preserved, neither contained organic material due to the holes that allowed air inside. From November 21st to November 26th, the coffins were transferred to Toulouse University Hospital for further examination, where they were searched and inspected utilizing scanners and x-rays. The French National Institute of Preventative Archaeological Research, INRAP, in collaboration with the University of Toulouse, recently reported that after rigorous analysis, they had successfully identified the victims, the cause of death and their lives. The two coffins are very different, the researchers stated. They have neither the same form nor the same method of assembly, nor the same alloy nor the same age. This means they are from distinct layers and as a result different eras. The first coffin was discovered in a stone vault approximately a metre beneath, while the second was discovered several feet deeper. When the coffins were unearthed, one of them included a plate made of brass that bore the name Antoine de la Porte and the date that he had passed away, which was December 24, 1710. He was a well-known and respected statesman who helped to rebuild the magnificent Notre Dame Cathedral during his period. There is also a painting of the High Priest by Jean Juvenet at the Louvre Museum in Paris depicting a mass held inside the cathedral around the year 1708. The High Priest, dubbed Jubilee Canon, usually offered financial support for the rebuilding of the Notre Dame choir enclosure in accordance with Louis XIV's commitment. Canon's coffin was discovered buried with three medals, one of which was not intact when it was removed from the ground. The skeleton had no living tissue left on it but the remains, as well as the hair and beard, were perfectly preserved. Delaporte's teeth appeared to be in good shape even at the age of 83, which was unusual for someone his age. Delaporte's sole visible indication of illness was his big toe, which appeared to be damaged by gout. This is an arthritic condition that is frequently linked with royalty who consume excessive amounts of meat, seafood or alcohol. The other coffin was directly shaped to the body it housed, the man appears to have died between the ages of 25 and 40, and he was clearly significant given his burial. An endoscopic examination revealed a withering floral crown within, as well as more leaves at the abdominal level. The coffins were opened by a biological anthropologist named Eric Krubezy, who claimed that the man's body was in terrible overall health, most of his teeth missing and his bones showing symptoms of injury. Some characteristics of the man's skeleton led Krubezy to believe he died from chronic meningitis caused by tuberculosis. Krubezy believes he would have had a painful death. The figure's sewed skull implies that he was embalmed, which is supported by the well-known embalming plans with which he was buried. Surprisingly, embalming was not a widely used practice in medieval France. Embalming technique reached its pinnacle during the time of the ancient Egyptians. Trying to embalm someone in the 13th century sounds strange. So who exactly is this man? What was the purpose of his embalming? Was he Egyptian in origin? Even if we don't know it for the time being, noticeable funeral customs indicate that this individual was a nobleman, a horseman based on his pelvic bones. Researchers dubbed him Le Cavalier. Krubezy speculated that this knight had been wearing a headband since infancy in order to elongate his cranium. This was common practice in affluent circles. The knight had a purposefully deformed skull as a result of having a tight cloth band tied around his head for the first three months of his infancy, which caused the shape change. In the 1920s, Peruvian archaeologist Giulio Tello, known as the father of Peruvian archaeology, discovered hundreds of elongated Paracas culture skulls dating from 750 BC to 100 AD, which have since been discovered throughout the Middle East and Asia, it is widely accepted that cranial banding and the accompanying enlarged skulls were power symbols used by ruling families in various countries. However, long after the practice had died out in Peru, it was still practiced in the western French province of Deux Sèvres until the early 20th century. Here too, the practice was a symbol of power among social elites, but it was also adopted by lower status families attempting to associate their children with higher social strata. In-wrap experts intend to analyse the two bodies further in order to learn more about who they were and how they lived. However, as fascinating as these individuals may be to scientists and historians, in France, human rights come first. Bodies discovered in coffins are not considered archaeological relics under French law. They are remains that must be treated with respect. 
The INRAP team intends to observe these laws and after their work with the remains is over, they will be laid to rest in a serene setting once more. The day after the fire, L'Héritier and art historian Arnaud Hibert of the Université de Bretagne Occidentale in Quimper, France, formed the Association of Scientists. Today the group includes over 200 scientists, including geologists, archaeologists and engineers. The association's goal is to coordinate work among experts in various fields, share knowledge and advocate for scientific research on the cathedral. L'Héritier, who studies ancient metals, is curious about how iron was used in the structure, including its incorporation into the stone walls and the carpentry that supported the roof. While iron was added to the structure during renovations in the 19th century, the researchers will be looking for medieval iron placed during the original construction. The fire has allowed researchers to study parts of the building that were previously inaccessible. Scientists have collaborated on plans to investigate the cathedral's history as well as the environmental impact of the fire on the surrounding city. Some will even investigate what the cathedral's aged materials can reveal about climate change. What are your thoughts on this? Tell us in the comments down below.